afternoon and welcome to Tortilla Talk. I'm your host, Dylan, and with me today is Dallas and Troy. And we got uh, quite the show for you today. First, we're going to preview the TCU at Texas Tech basketball game coming up. And then we'll go through the All-Star Weekend, as well as uh, cover our little pepper shenanigans that we got into the other day. But first, like I said, we'll start with TCU at Texas Tech. So these teams previously met before. And as we remember, our Red Raiders fell in that game, 85-78 to TCU. Um, you remember the game, there was definitely, you know, I would say some anomalies, like TCU getting hot from three, especially PEV. You had Tennyson drop 23 on us. But, hey, hopefully that doesn't happen again. I'll start with you, Dallas. I mean, what are the keys to this game? What do you see the Red Raiders needing to do to uh, turn it around from last time? Last time we got screwed by the Big 12 rest, as we all know. Uh, they got two extra points, which ended up mattering. But um, <laughs> outside of that not happening again, uh, the big thing will be just the offensive boards. That's where TCU lived and died. Um, they're they're a great rebounding team and a good team to get out and transition and push the ball. So worried with Washington status still kind of up in the air, but if he's back, I feel like the team as a whole has come a long way the last few games uh, in the rebounding category. I think we killed Kansas on the boards and uh, we're pretty, pretty even with Iowa state this past game. So, uh, I think we've made some improvements where we need to. PV isn't going to start shooting like Steph Curry again, I hope. (laughs) Uh, And I think think we come away with the win. Yeah, Troy, I'm going to bring up some of the stuff Dallas just said there. You have Washington, who we're not sure of his status. He dropped 14-6 and on him last time. And obviously, we're a different team in the post without him, both rebounding and offensively down low. With the way Jennings and Lindsay have kind of come on, do you think they can step up in his absence, or does that worry you for this matchup? I do think they can step up. I don't think they need to be dominant in the paint by any means. I think they just have to bother them uh, and be aggressive. And so crash the boards when you see it. Don't worry if you're going to foul people. Uh, kind of take that out of the back of your mindset and just get boards. You know, I don't think they're going to go in there and score a lot of points. As long as they can bother some of those bigger guys and make their presence felt, uh, I like their chances. Yeah, I kind of like what you said there. I think, you know, if those guys just do what they need to do, essentially, you know, and play like they have been, honestly. They haven't been playing too poorly recently. So if we can do that and then not have all of our guards miss every shot, uh, we could be a lot better this game. But Dallas, I can throw it back to you. Last time we played him, Pop had 25 Obviously, he's kind of been struggling as of recent. Do you think he can find it and get back on track at home against TCU? I mean, if there's going to be a game, this is the game to do it. This was his last big performance was against TCU before he got sick, before he's kind of gone real cold in Big 12 play. Uh, I think that lineup that you go against, I know they put PV on him a little bit, but I think uh, some of TCU's guards are sometimes over physical and pops really good at drawing fouls i mean as most of us know he's kind of looking to do that on just about every play if he's not trying to pull up from three um so i think he can take advantage of that be aggressive uh we need washington back for the pick and roll with them too uh i think we can we can tear him up there and there's no better spot for shooters to get hot again than coming back home against a rival so uh, I'm I'm hopeful at least to get him or uh, McMillan shooting well again. Yeah, no, I definitely agree with you, Dallas. And um, Troy, I'll kind of bring it back to you. Dallas is saying that um, hopefully we get Pop and the guys hot. Well, speaking of hot, Jameer Nelson Jr. for them, coming off that big buzzer three. Uh, they're kind of riding that momentum. Maybe a little hangover from that game for him here, Troy? There definitely could be, especially coming to Lubbock. Obviously. Uh, United Supermarket Arena is a tough place to play, and the crowd does an extremely good job of that. And they're probably eager to get a game back at home, uh, especially in a revenge game, right? And so I'm sure that uh, we'll have a good crowd uh, for the game. And, you know, you got to imagine that TCU is going to bring in their best effort, especially because 
but we got the same record um, and they're trying to make the tournament. And so they're going to, you know, try to win their last six games as well. Yeah, no, that's hundred percent true. And speaking of like trying to make the tournament, win these games, Dallas, both teams are seven and five. Usually you hear all the pundits say eight is the number of wins you need the big 12 to make the tournament. So it feels like if you win this, you're probably on that lock instead of the bubble, right? Yeah, yeah. From what I've seen is Tech searching for basically one last win as long as it's not against West Virginia or UCF. Uh, so I, I think this definitely would lock them in. And, I mean, if they win this game, I think there's a realistic chance that you're looking at uh, possibly starting to creep up to that four seed. Uh, obviously, a big win against Baylor or Texas would help that a lot. Um most people, I think, got us around the five, six seed line. So I, I think it could be really huge for uh, March implications. Yeah, 100%. Troy, spreads five and a half. Does Tech cover? Five and a half, wow. Yeah, I think the guys get going. I think that, to Dallas's point, right, Chance and Pop can only play this bad for so long. The tide's got to change, and I think it changes uh, tomorrow in United Supermarket Arena, and I think they combine for 40 points, and uh, you can take both of their overs as well because uh, they will. Yeah, and last thing, Dallas, Troy keeps saying it's in Lubbock at United Supermarkets Arena. Surely that means the Big 12 refs will be on our side, right? Uh, well, don't call me Shirley. And <laughs> – uh, I, I count on it. I'll, I'll I'll wait and see uh, see about the game because they haven't been on our side of too often this year. That, that's fair enough, Dallas. <laughs> All right, we'll we'll go ahead and move on to uh, the All Star Weekend, guys. So we just got out of the NBA All Star Weekend and lackluster, I guess, in my opinion. We'll start with the highlight though. Mac McClung, Reckham Tech, right? Won the dunk contest. Uh, Dallas, did you catch any of the dunk contest? And if so, did Mac McClung uh, impress you a little bit? Uh, I caught the most important parts, the Mac McClung dunks. Uh, hey. it, it was insane that that double clutch dunk where he let go of the ball and dunked it behind his head was like a 46 or whatever. That was like something that had never been done. Um, and then dunking over Shaq is hilarious, especially when. You've got other guys jumping over guys that are like five foot one. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it was obviously he stole the show. Um, he puts in, I think, probably a lot more effort than the other guys, obviously. Uh, and get the man a contract. Get him on an NBA squad. Yeah. No, he uh, definitely impressed in there. It's good to see a Red Raider win the dunk contest. Troy. You got McGuire, McCasland, and McClung. It's Return of the Mac, isn't it? It sure is, and they're all having the time of their life too. Uh, what a what a comeback spot for uh, McClung. Uh, excited for him, and hopefully he can get on a roster. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I agree, man. Hopefully he can. Uh, and then the the low light of the weekend, the actual All Star game itself. I mean, what it was almost. 400 points scored among the two teams. You had Silver talking about it, before, Adam Silver, before the game, saying it's going to be competitive. Um, you know, it's going to be a big game, awesome, whatever. And then after the game, he just seemed so defeated when talking. About it. He was like, hey, you scored four points, so you won, I think is what he said to the East team, <laughs> as Dallas is getting attacked by a dog, I believe. My dog <laughs> wants to play all of a sudden. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I'll start with you guys. Does the All-Star game even matter anymore, Troy? Does it? Is it a thing? Is it something you're excited for? Or is it just become, who cares at this point? Is it something I'm excited for? Not really. Was I interested because I had the over? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and that, that's the only way I think you can make it interesting. I mean, the players don't care. So I don't know why why we would. I don't know how you fix it either. I mean, maybe you do a paycheck or whatever that looks like. Um, but really, there's absolutely no defense. And, yeah, I think outside of that, you probably don't care. <laughs> yeah, 
What about you, Dallas? Did that game even draw your interest at all? No, no. Um, that was, I don't know why they still do that. I mean, I don't know why they do the Pro Bowl. Uh, there, there's uh, any of these All Star games have completely uh, lost any kind of attractiveness to me. I, I, it's because it seems like so many athletes now are so paranoid about getting hurt. So I, I don't know. It's if they're so worried about it, just don't do it. Have other skills challenges and stuff where they'll uh, they'll actually showcase some talent. I don't care about. Luca just like firing up shots over the back of his head from mid court <laughs> stuff like that's all right. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, big check fixes it. All the guys in the All Star game are making hundreds of millions. So yeah, yeah, make it. Hey, do like uh, how uh, the MLB used to do, and winner gets home court advantage in the finals. That'll get some guys some playing. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, something like that to put it, you know, something on the line that matters to at least some people on the team. Um, you know, I've, I've seen some different things thrown out there uh, to try to make it competitive. But I, I think what you just said is probably one of the better ones to actually get people to care about it. Otherwise, yeah, they're I mean, it's just a bunch of rich people. We can't give them more money. They don't. What's that to them? Yeah. Uh, the funny thing I saw was people are just like, so it's it's basically your you know, pick up basketball game, except everyone's a freak athlete. It's like, yeah, no, that makes sense. No one wants to play defense. So <laughs> yeah, it is what it is at this point. But I think that's kind of the problem across all these sports leagues. Like I think the dunk contest matters when Mac McClung wins it <laughs> and when they're, <laughs> they're doing cool dunks you haven't seen. But at this point, maybe the home run derby is the only thing that matters. And I don't even know on what level, but just seems like all these kind of have gone off the rails a little bit. So hopefully, to, to your guys' point, they can think of something to fix it. You could have the NBA players do the home run derby. Everyone do each other's sport. Yeah. <laughs> That's an idea. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I like this. <laughs> also, yeah. the three-point contest, everyone's too good. <laughs> Shooting threes. And it's ridiculous when, like, you have to put Steph in his own separate one-on-one, -on -one, separate from the contest, because he's too good. Like, at that point, I don't care already, because you're not putting the best guy in it. Yeah. I, I don't know, man. Yeah. Right now, by the way. I, <laughs> look at what I'm dealing with. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, we'll see if there's anything that can be done about this, but who knows. All right, we'll move on to the um, next topic. Hey, the spicy pepper <laughs> after this uh, this last Iowa State loss. And, man, I'm alive. I'm here. It was bad. I had bad form. After re-watching the video, um, Nick was smart. You know, you, you bite into it, take two bites and swallow. I don't know why I decided continuously biting it was a good idea, but I paid for it. And apparently that was good enough for all of us to think, hey, we should do stuff like this more often. I don't know who thought of that because I didn't, but I guess everyone else on our team did. <laughs> um, so we're thinking of doing one for the Texas game. Thank God we won't have to because we're going to kill Texas. But if by some reason Texas beats us, we are going to do another punishment. But. We're going to leave that up to the fans. So please give us some ideas in the comments of whatever punishment you would like to see. Hopefully Dallas or Troy perform <laughs> on the post -game recap as opposed to myself. Um, but whatever, I'm down. For, I'm down to try it. Who knows? But yeah, um, what was your guys kind of reaction watching that? Uh, must have been good from the sidelines, Dallas. It was hilarious. My parents were over at the house and, uh, you know, Scott's a big fan. So he was, he was laughing. Um, I got a question. Was the initial part worse or is the aftermath later? Uh, <laughs> so good question. So the worst part for me, so bite into it, right? Start. I just couldn't force it down. So then I just had to keep chewing to make it smaller to force it down, right? And I'm just like, that's when it started hitting. 
And from there, like your tongue goes numb, but it's not numb to where you can't feel anything. Like I felt like I had a lisp the whole time I was talking. Like everything just hurt. And yeah. it was just my lips. But afterwards, it was so bad. There might have been, you know, stuff that, thank God I stocked up on bathroom essentials. But <laughs> it, that wasn't bad. It was definitely the first part of the recap where you just see me, I think, repeatedly, like, uh, like freaking out. That was, it was unbearable. Nothing helped. Ice cream made it worse. The milk wasn't moving anything around. Um, it wasn't good. <laughs> well, you, you messed up not getting the, uh, or getting the low-fat milk. That, that was I, where you messed up. <laughs> I know. I know. Trust me. I know. Yeah, Troy, what was your reaction to that? You must have had a great time from the host chair. Yeah, you know, I thought I did a really good job in that spot and definitely am willing to do any more hosting I need to during those challenges. I'll I'll really sure. keep it together and uh, keep us on track. But relative to what uh, I thought y'all's performance was, I thought both of y'all were hilarious. Dylan, I don't think you even said anything until about 12 minutes in. I couldn't. Uh, I tried. Yeah. I think the only thing I said was really bad or something when you asked me how the first half went. <laughs> yeah, you said really bad. The <laughs> offense was terrible. <laughs> the big guy, the big guy Jones killed us. <laughs> um, hey, yeah. It, if you were to say, if you would ask for a recap of the first half, offense was really bad. Jones killed us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think I hit all the points I wanted to at the first half. Yeah, you, you did. I'm trying to put together a clip with you just consuming all those dairy products too. I mean, that was, that was the funniest thing. I had to stop looking at you because I just kept cracking up. And then every time I looked over, you had another, you had the half gallon of milk and, or ice cream or the blue cup. <laughs> and I was just like, how many liquids does this guy have? So it's funny. Um, I think you could see it on one of those shorts you made. And I was telling you before, I was like, Hey, Tell me what you think when I take my first scoop of ice cream, because when I, I was, everything was so hot and I was panicking. Right. So the first scoop of ice cream I took, I had the spoon upside down and I just <laughs> spilled it all over the table. <laughs> I was just a frenzy. I was just panicking. I just spilled it. <laughs> but yeah, oh, man. we'll see. Um, like I said, we're thinking of doing it again. So please comment your ideas for the Texas game. And Dallas and Troy will be more than happy to perform the next one. But uh, that's all that we have today. Thank you guys for tuning in. We are Tech and Tortillas. And I want to remind you guys right now that we are doing a Micah Hudson football giveaway. Um, I won't say the words that are on it right now, but it's a good, it's a great, you know, great football, great thing to have, especially because we all know he's going to have a great career and uh, definitely do well as a Red Raider. But the ways that you can qualify for this, you have to be following us on Twitter at Tech and Tortillas, Tech Letter N Tortillas, and follow us on YouTube, same thing, at Tech Letter N Tortillas. And then you have to also send us a screenshot in the DMs on Twitter of you following us or subscribe to us on YouTube. Guys, pretty good giveaway. It's a football you'd want to have, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is. I got myself one, so I already do. <laughs> awesome. So, again, please like, subscribe, at Tech and Tortillas. And as always, guys, guns up. Break them. Break them.